Grandpa. We were home, and there were horses everywhere. White horses. They were all white horses. White horses, eh? They were everywhere in the hotel, in the lobby, and the dining rooms. You were awful angry. But people kept giving you money and saying it would be okay. But it wasn't. They just kept bringing more horses in. Well, what happened then? When? In your dream with all the horses in our hotel. I don't know. You're leaving me in a quite a pickle here. Horses stomping around in my hotel, me being angry. Is that all you remember? Just the mom and dad were there. Like they never died. I miss him too, Tommy. talks the stockholders into selling this land. They'll build a thousand houses here. <laughs> People like Madden have been trying to buy this land to build on since before you were born. Just like back home in the city. They want to buy our hotel so they can tear it down and build 20-story condominiums. Ah, great balls of fire, boy. I haven't got anything against houses and supermarkets or condominiums, for that matter. I know that people need homes to live in but not on the land where our hotel stands. We're on this land, other land that looks like this. There ought to be some things in the world just left alone, just like the good Lord made them. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Message said urgent. Yes. Well, ever since we detected the object entering our orbit four days ago, it's maintained an OBT of 37.422. Now, in the last hour, it's changed trajectory twice. Three nine point nine nine four. What about the space agency readout I requested? They've checked and rechecked. They're absolutely sure. Craft, whatever it is we're monitoring, was not launched by any of the nations on Earth. It's changing trajectory again, sir. Can you tell what's causing the alteration? Delaney? Well, there's a definite heat displacement, sir. It has to be some kind of engine, but it's uneven. It's like the craft is losing power and at the same time using up what power it has left to line up for an Earth entry. Conrad. Yes? If none of the countries on Earth sent this craft up, does that mean it's a UFO? Well, sir, what I mean is, scuttlebutt around here is that's what you specialize in, why you were sent here. Does the prospect of an unidentified flying object bother you, Sergeant? Better bother someone. The craft has just entered our atmosphere. Apparently, is headed for a landing. Where? It doesn't alter trajectory again. It should land about 600 miles from here, somewhere around Gold Rush, California.
Sheriff's office, Deputy Sweeney here. Got the siren off, Sheriff. you've been saying, 
Don't you know this is just what they'd want you to do? Panic? Now, what I know is the Air Force believes that for some reason that spacecraft was disabled, that it was forced to land here, and that if we're willing to act fast enough in the defense of our country, well, then maybe, just maybe, we can stave off the onslaught of alien creatures until the National Guard gets here. up by the creek. Ten four. All right, fellas. Smitty and Brownie are moving south along the ridge. So if we keep on along this ravine, we should uh, meet them up near Turtle Creek. Okay, let's move on up. Now, well, Mr. Anderson, three hours of searching, you'd think we'd have found something by now, eh? <laughs> Listen, Mr. Anderson, some folks are supposed to meet us here with coffee and donuts. And I sure hate just to go on off and leave them. But what do you have in mind, Sheriff? Well, I thought that if you wouldn't mind being here alone, I'd sure appreciate it if you and Tommy would stay here and wait for them. We shall be back in about 30 minutes, no matter what. Well, if there's a chance for donuts and coffee while well, you got yourself a couple of volunteers, wouldn't you say, Tommy? Thanks, Mr. Anderson, Tommy. Now, listen. If anything should happen before we get back, uh, well, you've heard the rumors and what they said about those creatures and what they did to New York and Chicago. If anything should come up, you shoot first and ask questions afterwards. I'll keep that in mind, Sheriff. Thanks. What you laughing at? I was wondering if the Sheriff was all that worried about the donuts and coffee or... What? Or oh, he just figured a couple of city fillers like us was pretty near petered out by now, huh? <laughs> Grandpa, do you really think it was a flying saucer we saw? To tell you the truth, Tommy, I got mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, I hope we haven't been tramping around the woods here for the last three hours of... only a boy. We have no weapons. How many are there of you? This is all. 
This is my family. Dalem. I know you're frightened of us, but believe me, even though we're from another star system, we're very much like you. I'm afraid for my family. We need your help. Thank you. Why are you thanking me? For trusting us. How do you know? Anderson here with my grandson Tommy. We're waiting for the truck with the donuts and the coffee. Who else is with you? Just me and the boy. Something's fishy. I could have swore there were more than two people out there. I don't think he believes you. Was there anything else we can do for you? Seth, he's suspicious. Isn't there anything you can do? Maybe if I, uh... What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. You must be doing something. truth? I really don't know. I just tried to plant the thought in his head to drive away. You shouldn't let Teva do that. She's best at it. My dad probably just got too many electromagnetic forces all jumbled up together. Right. The National Guardsman, will he be okay? Well, sure, they'll be fine as soon as it wears off. But that means they'll be coming right back. We need your help. I think we'd better go. Our cabin is about a mile away. You'll be safer there than down here. My cabin is not much further from here if we can just get across this creek. Without saying, the sooner you leave our Earth, the better, huh? Well, there's nothing we'd like more. But as I said, our ship is damaged and we have to make repairs. How long will that take? Not long at all, once we find the material we need. But that's our problem. We expect to find it in the surface deposits near where we landed. That was before we landed in the lake. Well, after that happened, I thought we'd find it near the shoreline. Okay, Tommy. What we know of your language, we learned in your radio and television broadcast. But there didn't seem to be much mention of any basic elements or metals in the transmissions we've received. Well, are you sure that it exists here on our planet? Well, we have an abundance at home, and our scanner indicates that your planet is composed very much like our own. We lost you. Ginger, Ginger, what's that? Well, we're not sure, really. We found her on one of the planets we were visiting for our work. She was just a baby then, an orphan, so we've kind of adopted her. We better get moving. <laughs> Of the National 
National Guard. Sir, there's a telephone call there waiting for you. Man says it's very important. Have you had any contact with the aliens? No, we haven't even found the saucer yet. But it won't take long. We've got over 150 men out looking. I own the old highways closed. Yes, sir. We started barricading about an hour ago. All vehicles trying to leave the area will be stopped and checked. Right this way, sir. Sweeney! This is Conrad. Conrad, what the devil's going on there? You've ordered out Air Force planes, helicopters, four companies of National Guard, and you've, you've placed the whole county in California under military law. I'm aware of what I've done, but Dave, this time I've got it. We've tracked this craft for four days. I don't want to hear any more, Conrad. I've heard it all before, too many times, and I warned you what was going to happen. I know. I know. One more wild goose chase, one more embarrassment for the agency, and my department doesn't get funded next quarter. After 20 years, I'm kaput, out of business. Just so you know what the stakes are, my friend. Oh, I know the stakes. Let's go. We saw a big meteor shower the first day we landed. Oh, watch what comes out of these caves. Wow, what are they? Psychomites. They're really cute. They love to crawl all over you and tickle. <laughs> and then when you start to laugh, they imitate your laugh. They sound just like you. Oh, this is the play I was telling you about, where we found Ginger. It's all red. Yeah, it was really terrific. It had three sons and the greatest insects you ever saw. Dale of only likes places that have creepy, crawly things on them. And Tim only likes places where they're teenage boys. You should have seen her when we tuned into television on this planet. She almost went crazy. She's still trying to figure out a way she can meet John Travolta and Sean Cassidy. You little ghoul of Thornton. She called me a ghoul of Thornton. I've been trying to go to sleep, but Dale won't turn that thing off. Now, Dale, I told you to turn this off a long time ago. Come on, it is time to go to sleep. We all have to get a good night's rest if we're going to be able to repair the ship. I thought you were older than that. Good night. Mm. Good night, Tommy. Good night. Tommy, none of your shenanigans now. Yes, sir. My daughter-in-law, Tommy's mother. She's been gone a year now. For a moment, you reminded me of her, the way you were tucking the children in. Mind if I ask you a question? Of course. You knew I was thinking of someone named Ellen. Just how much of my mind can you read? Mostly we sense emotions, love, anger, and, and in your case, trust. It's a very handy ability. Handy if you're a woman. If you're a man, it can be quite maddening. You mean your men can't do it? Well, it seems some things are universal. Most men down here are certain that women know what they're thinking. Find what you need? Nope. Oh, I keep forgetting that we can do some things that you can't. It must be rather upside down to you. Honey, I think the word is upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Now that's the metal we need to obtain. At home we call it slorian ore. I don't know what you call it here on this planet. It's interesting. It feels kind of oily. Well, that oily quality is what makes it unique. Its heat resistance is ten times greater than any metal in the galaxy. That's the problem. We have to find some here. Well, unless you're fighting time. I don't see any problem. 
You are fighting time. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. You see, there are things in space, for lack of a better word, we call them windows. They allow us to travel from one star system to another. We were nearing the window we needed to return home when we ran into a cosmic storm, which, well, it damaged our guidance system. I see. And the window that we need to leave your star system is going to close soon. And if we ever want to see our home again, we have to leave your planet within 60 hours from the time we landed. That gives you less than two and a half days. Not much time. Do you think maybe we should contact some of your Earth authorities? Oh, under the circumstances, it might not be the wisest thing to do. See, if you call in the authorities, I'm afraid it might take a lot longer than two and a half days to convince them that, that, that you didn't mean any harm. See. You're thinking that they might never let us leave. What would you suggest? Well, what you need is information. Now, Tommy and I are heading back for the city in the morning. It's just three hours from here. And uh, we'd like to have you come along. We could put you up, we've got plenty of room, show you a little of our world. And the most important for you, the university with its libraries is just a couple of blocks away from our hotel. Do you think this university has the information we need? It might. Well, I hate to get further and further away from the ship, but we have to do something. Look, we'd be horrified to join you. Honored, honey. He means honor. Yeah, that too. <laughs> All right, well, that's very good news. 10 4. Conrad? Excuse me, I just thought you'd like to know. All roads are now officially barricaded. No one's going to be able to get out without us knowing about it. Excellent. They're strange looking, but pretty. What are they? I saw them on television. They're insurance cells. <laughs> They're not insurance sales? They're called elk. You find them all over in these parts. They're animals. Insurance salesmen have to be people. Uh oh. What is it? Trouble, I'm afraid. If I'm not mistaken, they're looking for you. Well, maybe you should just turn around and go the other way. I'm afraid right now it'd be like waving a red flag in front of a bull. But what are we going to do? The only thing we can do is put on a poker face, smile, and just bluff our way through. Quick, close the blinds. Morning, sir. Good morning. Morning. What's all this? Well, it has to do with that UFO we spotted last night. That fellow over there by Deputy Sweeney, space agency sent him down here. His name is Conrad. Had to set up roadblocks for a 50-mile radius. Well, what you looking for? Strangers. You know what I mean. Oh, does that mean that you found the UFO? Well, not yet. But we've got over 300 men out looking for it now. We'll find it. Well, uh, good luck to you, Sheriff. I'm on my way down to the city, and if I see anything suspicious, I'll give you a call on the CB. I'm supposed to search all vehicles, Mr. Anderson. But I guess you're okay. All right, man, you can let this one go through. Just a minute. Well, I can vouch for Mr. Anderson. I'm sure you can, Sheriff. But my orders are to search all vehicles. That's right. That's what his orders are. Come with me. Thank 
pet monkey. He spilled a can of green paint all over him. You can drive on. That's funny. I never knew Tommy had a green monkey. <laughs> That's neat. Next car. It's just a matter of locking electrical body forces. Usually you have a partner you're touching. You concentrate and hold your breath all at the same time. Back home is where we used to play hide and go seek. <laughs> I'll show you how to use the telephone, just in case you need it later. You can see just about everything from here. Aren't they cute? They sure are. What are they called? Doves. Come on, I won't hurt you. You and your creepy crawly thing. That's all there is to it. That's right. I've been looking for you for hours. Boy, good thing I saw you drive around front. Oh, we have trouble. Slow down, Willie. Slow down. What's your problem? Well, uh, everything, sir. I mean, not everything, but uh, uh, the big freezer's on the blank, and uh, the laundry misplaced 300 tablecloths. Well, where are the blazers at Billings? Well, that's just it, sir. He quit this morning. He quit? The manager of a hotel doesn't quit the day before a stockholders meeting. You think Madden had anything to do with this? Rumor has it, sir, that Madden gave Billings a job in a big hotel in Hawaii and money to get there on. Well, it looks as if I've come back to a hornet's nest. So I must excuse myself for a little while. Willie, these are the people who I reserved the suite for, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Robinson. This is my bell captain and friend, Willie. Ah, uh, now, it's Mr. and Mrs. Robinson, uh, as in Swiss family. Oh, uh, <laughs> Swiss family. They're from Kansas City. <laughs> Well, it's Kansas City. Well, that's where you're from, isn't it, Bob? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just a little tiny world. <laughs> <laughs> certainly is. <laughs> uh, Willie, I'd appreciate it. Now, if you'd go back to the front desk and check them in, all right? Oh, yes, sir. Nice to meet you folks. Bye. Something wrong, Grandpa? Yeah, it's Madden, but don't worry about that. I'll take care of him. Now, meanwhile, I want you to fill in for me around here. Now, when the is ready, I want you to take him over to the science library at the university, okay? Hey, can I go too? Tommy promised me he'd show me around and introduce me to some of his friends. That's a good idea. We're going to make the most of our stay here. I should meet with Earth children of their age. Yeah, that's fine for Dalen. He's got Tommy, but what about Teva? Oh, I could just go to the swimming pool or something. Hmm? Why is it I feel there's more than meets the ear here? You know, I have an idea. Willie has a sister who spends quite a lot of time at the pool. She's about Teva's age. And I believe her favorite subject is, uh, boys. Oh, 
worry. Wow, how did you do that? Halfway as usual. What's that supposed to mean? Well, just that you forgot that. Girls. of all is that all the time you're in space you don't have to go to school. I wish. You mean you do have to go to school? Well, besides being scientists, both my parents are teachers. What do your folks do? My dad used to help my grandpa run the hotel. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, what does he do now? My mom and dad died in a car crash a year ago yesterday. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. People die all the time, and you can't bring them back by being sorry. But I know he was sorry. I could feel it. He wanted to cry. Yeah. But why did you say that? Sometimes some things hurt so much. It's hard to make it there. Come on, Dave. library over there. You know, Tommy, when I was a boy about your age, my dad was killed in a space shuttle accident. It was the worst feeling I ever had. A shot put. You never played this at home. And what happens if you try and catch you some this? Uh, can I try that? Sure. Sure. It must have something to do with the difference in the gravity. Hey, you! Come here. Listen now, this is where we split up. You guys be careful now. See you back at the hotel. Go on. Right, let's go. Hey, wait, hey! Come back! Hey, come back! Come back, please! Hey, you! Coach! Hey, Coach Conway! I just solved all our shot footing problems. What are you talking about? Our kid just threw the shot put for the field all the way to the tennis court. No, it's the truth, really. I'll take you out there to show you where it landed. All the way to the tennis courts? All the way to the tennis courts. That would shatter the world record. And this kid, where is he? Well, that's the bad part. He, he ran away. He what? Well, we've got to find him. What did he look like? Well, uh, no problem there, Coach. I know exactly what he looks like. I could pick him out of a thousand. He has brown hair, about 90 pounds, five feet tall, and I would guess about 11 years old. About 11 years old. Oh, give or take a year. He could be 12. Or maybe just a big 10. Just a big 10? All the way to the tennis courts? 
Sterling, do me a favor. Yes, Coach? For the rest of the day, do your best to stay out of the sun. Mm-hmm. searched every other cabin on this bridge, and we're going to search this one. Mr. Conrad. Sitting in this little one. Looks like hair. But it's green, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. About as much sense as a green monkey. because I'm the captain of my sixth grade team, and last week we beat his team for the park championship. We want to play for the championship again. Terrific. Come around next year. We'll see if we can fit you in. We want to play now, Anderson, and not for any lousy trophies. They want to play for our bikes. Our bikes? You heard him. All the bikes your team owns against all the bikes we own. But that's crazy. We killed you last week. It was a fluke. Fluke, we beat you by 22 points. What do you say, Anderson? You playing or are you chicken? Never say all day we ain't got the guts to play. But our bikes, there's something fishy here. Chicken. Gotta play him, Tommy. Can't let him call us chicken. 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 Oh no, I told you they were setting this up. It's the Goon Twins. Hey, but that's not fair. They're in the eighth grade. Wrong, smart guy. They were in the eighth grade until last week when they were both flunked down to the sixth. But those guys are animals. Man, I got a feeling they're animals who could ride bikes. your game, but I could probably help. Forty more seconds, Anderson, and we got ourselves some nice new bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
After spending several hours with my new friend Rosie, I've come to the conclusion that teenage life here on Earth doesn't seem to be much different than at home. The boys seem to fall into the same general classes. Your basic show off. Your basic primitives. And of course, your basic perfect specimen. Rosie, who is it? He must have just checked in. I don't know. Teva, wouldn't it be terrific if they asked us to the disco tonight? Really? Boyd here. Now the professor's gone for the day, but this is a restricted area. I think I'm going to have to ask you to show me some identification. And I'm afraid if you don't show me any identification, I'm going to have to take you to security headquarters. Identification? Mm-hmm. Oh, in the car. There's some in the car. I'll be happy to show it to you. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just came in from the store downstairs. I had to go out and buy some light bulbs. Light bulbs? Well, Jin Jin has discovered they have a form of Ulex in them. <laughs> you know how much she loves Ulex. How many she eat? Well, all of them here in the suite. And she was working her way down the hallway when I heard the screaming. Listen. Listen, I'll, I'll see you back at the hotel, OK? OK, honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. In that case, pretend it didn't happen.
Oh, Rosie, I don't think anything's gonna work. Guess it just wasn't meant to be. I overheard at the snack bar that they're both trying out for the Olympic diving team. And they're only interested in athletic girls. Athletic girls? Well, maybe then there's one more trick we can try. We may be discoing tonight after all. in my life. Oh, did you like it? It was stupendous. I found it particularly interesting also. I'm afraid you are going to have to come with me, young lady. I guess you think you're pretty smart not talking. But I got news for you. It's going to go a lot easier for you and your little blue scaly friends if you cooperate. There's a lot of things that the American public want to know. Like, is it true that all the people on Mars are only two feet tall? I need is a little more time. I've got a dozen men watching the hotel. I am aware the girl claims to be from Kansas City, but I am telling you I have made every computer check there is. There is no one named Jeff Robinson living in Kansas City. No home, no bank accounts, no credit cards, nothing but the figment of someone's imagination. Maybe so, Conrad, maybe so. But computers can make mistakes. You've gone too far, and I can't keep the lid on this one. Now, either prove what you say in the next 12 hours, or this time you're through. How's it going? I don't know. Madden seems to have quite a lot of support. That's his Middle Eastern friend who wants to buy this place to put up a 20-story monstrosity. How about you? You all set? The food's waiting in the kitchen. Where'd you go? Hey, be careful.
clever kid. Come on. You expect me to go down there? You want to be the one to tell Conrad we lost him? some food. What about a tether? They have her downtown at the Federal Building. Grandpa wrote it all down. They wouldn't hurt her, would they? No, they can't do that. There's laws against that. I guess she'll have told them a lot by now. Not Teva. What do you mean? Well, one of the first things we're taught when going on a mission is, if you're ever captured by aliens, you stay calm, never say a word, and wait for your rescue. Can't we do something? All right, hold on, hold on, please, don't hang up. Mr. Cutman, telephone for you. He says he's the girl's father. This is Conrad. My name is Zeph. I'm the man you're looking for. I'd like to make a trade. What did you have in mind? First, I'd like you to understand. We were forced to land on your planet to make repairs to our ship. We have no weapons. We wish to hurt no one. We're going to leave your Earth as soon as possible. And for our own sake, it has to be within the next 32 hours. You still haven't told me what you have in mind. For the safe return of my daughter, I have absolute proof that people from other worlds do exist. Where do you want to meet? The football stadium at the university. An hour from now, come along and bring my daughter. I'll give you what you want. Uh, not at night. Then when? Tomorrow morning, same place, 8 o'clock. Alone. But of course. Laura, if I draw you and Dalem a map, can you find the lab at the university? Sure, I don't see why not. Good. You get the slurring ore that we need, and I'll find a way to free Teva. I bet that'll be easy for you. I hope so. But I'm afraid Mr. Conrad has a clear advantage over us. You see, you Earthlings can do something that we can't. What's that? The ability to commit violence on another living being. Absolute proof that we exist. Fascinating. Put it down. Put down your gun first. Not a chance. No. 
we had a bargain. You're a spy, an alien from another civilization. You have no rights to bargain with. Why should I take just that when I have the two of you with it? Dad? Take one step, and I'll shoot. Really? With what? You're a jackass, Mr. Conrad. I think it's jackass, Daddy. Yeah, that too. Come on. You think you can be brave, hold your breath, and run at the same time? Yes. Okay. do that? Don't ask stupid questions. Just take your squad and block the exit. Sweeney, get the rest of the men. We're going up after you. Go! in there? I can't believe that you'd be that stupid. All I have to do is to go in there and bring out the real books and show them the real figures. Oh, beginning to get the picture. Yeah. 
Excuse me. I'll let you know when I check the accounting room. Looks like a hurricane hit it. Yeah, a hurricane named Madden. It's no wonder he's so sure his phony reports will hold up. What do you mean, boss? Well, it'll take a week to clean this place up to prove that he's lying, but then the hotel will be sold. We saw you crossing the lobby. Is there anything wrong? Mr. Ray, the police just arrested her. Maybe we're looking for him, sir. Billy, do you trust me? Yes, sir. You're the best friend I've ever had in my entire life. Then do what I ask you to do. Find Tommy and ask him to come here. Yes, sir. And Willie, don't say anything to anybody about these two people being here. Huh? Yes, sir. Glad to see that you got here safely. I'd heard that you two had escaped from Sunrise. Right? You sure travel as fast on this planet, then? No, not really. Sheriff DeRita called about 20 minutes ago and said Conrad had called him and said you two had escaped, but that he had it on good authority that you were going to try and leave the planet soon. How did he find that out? Uh, oh, it wasn't difficult. I told him. Well, the point is, he wanted permission to use my cabin as a base camp for three more companies of National Guard troops that he's called out. Well, that means the gold rush area is going to be crawling with people looking for us. What's worse, they're dragging the lake. Conrad insisted that's the only place they hadn't looked. Tommy's on his way. Mr. Ray, you've got to do something. Madden's out there making a speech and telling a pack of lies about you and the hotel and everything, sir. Would you go back out there and keep an eye on him? I'll be out in just a few minutes. Right? Yes, sir. Tan the station wagon in the parking lot. I guess you have to make a try for it. It's worth the risk. Good luck. You've been such a good friend. Well, now I'm worried about you. I mean, it's Madden. He could be a lot of trouble. A month ago, I would have said Madden was a joke. But right now, he's a telling a pack of lies to my stockholders. And they're just liable to sell my hotel right out from under me. You said he was lying. We might be able to do something about that. We had a chance to build a thousand houses on land owned by this corporation out near the resort town of Gold Rush. But Ned Anderson opposes it. God forbid we should put a beaver or a squirrel out of a home. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the fact that Ned Anderson owns 40% of the outstanding stock in this corporation, he is not the all-knowing, all-seeing being he would have us believe. The reports in front of you will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this hotel has been losing money consistently for the past six quarters. He's lying. I'm telling you, he, he's lying. Projections ...that we will continue to lose money. Divert his attention and I try. These reports will show that Ned Anderson has mismanaged this corporation. These reports will show... Uh, that, ...that the financial picture of this company is bleak. Ned Anderson would like to make this a personal matter. But I have nothing to gain from this except a $200,000 finder's fee from the Sheik. Uh, 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 what I mean is, uh, this is not only a good, but a necessary move for us stockholders, as can clearly be seen by these falsified reports I've made you about. Uh, 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 what I mean is, uh, 
Uh, I, uh, I mean, the, the sale to the sheik will be long complete, and we'll all be happy before Ned can sort out the true records I sabotaged, which will prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am honest to God, a liar and a cheat. I I move that we vote on the issue before us. All in favor of selling our hotel, say yay. All opposed, nay. Sit down. Why? I, uh, I noticed last night when you walked back from the stables, you were limping. Oh, it's okay. Just pull the muscle playing basketball. Let me see. Tell me when it starts getting warm.
right now. How did you do that? It's a little secret. If I had the time, I could teach you. Basically, in the briefest moment, the healer has to lock spirits with the person he's trying to help. And for that moment, that person is himself. You mean for a moment, you or me? Part of you is a better way of putting it. You see, your favorite color is blue. Your batting average in Little League last year was 368. <laughs> Tom, your mom and dad were wonderful people. They loved you more than anything else in this world. But it's time to let him go. It's been a year, and you're still holding back. All we hear, you haven't cried. But you're proud of that, aren't you? Huh? You're tough. There's nothing in this world that's gonna make you cry, is there? But your mom and dad would want you to cry. Sorry. Get over it. And then go on with the rest of your life and be happy. It's time to let him go. It's time to let it out. Your parents will always be with you. Your mind and your heart. Not in time, anyway. Not enough. Why not? Solorianor exists on this planet in very small quantities. It's, it's what they call a trace element. Well, that's impossible. Look, our scanner said it was here. But, Dad, we ran the test backwards and forwards. Our scanner said it exists here, and we just assumed it's in abundance, like at home. Maybe after millions of years of evolution, it will exist here in abundance, but not now. You mean we're trapped here? We can't leave this planet? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what to do or where to turn. I think I know what you folks are going through tonight. Do you feel that you're all alone and you must be frightened? So I want you to consider very carefully what I'm going to say. You see, I figure that a home is not just a piece of real estate. It's a place where you're welcome and, and you're needed. <laughs> and you're wanted and loved. Now, bearing this in mind, I, well, Tommy and I, we want you to stay here with us. We really do. Thank you. But we don't know enough to live here right now without attracting attention to ourselves or doing something that might cause you trouble. When you're in trouble, that's 
when you need true friends, and that's us. I don't know what we can say. Say yes, please. Salem and I are already friends, and we could help you get used to Earth. Besides, my grandpa needs you. He said to me before, he wished you didn't have to go. He said you were a lot like my mom and dad. And you are. Well, he sure saved my bacon down there this morning. Tommy's right. He sure could use you around here. We'll do the best we can. But it's not going to be easy. Conrad's not going to give up. You'll just have to find a way to confuse that busybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, if your ship is in shallow water and they're dragging the lake... It's about three meters below. Then they'll find it. And they won't stop looking until they find you. But would they have any way? I think so. If there's no proof of your spaceship, then it will be like all the other hundreds and hundreds of sightings. People forget about it, so it'll just blow over. But there's nothing we can do about it. Maybe there is. You see, this, uh, this lake was formed by a, a volcano millions and millions of years ago. And about here, it drops off and it's, it's bottomless. And if we can get the ship over the edge into the crater, it'll never be found. Good thing, Adami. Get a big, powerful boat out there at night, maybe we could drag her. We don't need a boat. I think the ship still has enough power to send it along the bottom. I'd say the sooner the better. All right, next problem. Establishing your Earth identities as the Robinson family of Kansas City. Maybe it'd be better with more Earth-like first names. You're right, but how do you go about doing something like that on this planet? Computers. Everything's computers nowadays. Credit cards, driver's licenses, birth certificates. Well, then all we have to do is to get all that information to the right computers. Well, we all have our jobs to do. Chance, hold your breath and disappear. But what am I going to do? I could try and plan an idea. On second thought, Dalem, you're always talking to animals. You think you could? I could try. Guys, we need your help. Please stop right there. <laughs> What's wrong with them? We're your friends. But right now, we're in danger. Please help us. We'll return the favor someday. But what I want you to do is to turn around. Now. What is 
wrong with these animals? What is wrong with them? And race home as fast as you can. Started looking for us. Okay, we gotta hurry. Get your stuff. Make sure you get something for everybody. It'll be the last things we ever see. Home. They're coming back. They could have crossed the lake this soon. Do you think they saw us? I don't know. We're gonna have to hurry. something down there. What is that? That is probably some kind of engine starting. You better get your gear on. Me too. 
It was friends like Tony, we're gonna be okay. But those other people, Dad. What are they hidden so? I guess because they're afraid of us. Because we're different. Just because somebody's different doesn't mean they have to hate him. It's stupid. It's been stupid for a long time in a lot of worlds. the place better than anybody. I guess you didn't hear about the way I cleaned the pool. Oh, but I did. But it might be better next time to use the conventional method. <laughs> Instead of the lifting the water up and sweeping underneath. All right, now what's the matter? Did the man come back and throw the shot put again? No. Then did the little boy come back again? And did he throw the shot put again? No. Then why on earth are you sitting here in the dark? Because the little boy's green monkey ate my light bulb. Thank you. 